Hello again all. So we've created our first few calculated columns and our first few measures in the data model window. We're going to have a look at displaying those measures now in pivot tables. So page 35 of the user guide and the first thing we shall do is insert a new pivot table. So let's select pivot table and the destination is a new worksheet and rename that group work five. I'll position that to the right of practice exercise four. We created our new calculated columns and measures in the sales table. So let's have a look in our pivot table field list and see how they display. And there they are at the bottom. Doesn't that just look so impressive? The F of X indicates that these are measures. Let's drag total standard costs down to values. In actual fact, all of them. We're just going to click and drag all of these into the values area. This can be quite tricky sometimes because there's not a lot of space down here. Even if we resize this, it can sometimes be a bit problematic and I'll just show you this top tip coming your way guys if you just click on here you can move up and move to the beginning move up move down it's, it's grayed out at the moment because profit percent is the last in the list but if you're having trouble with that then you can just click and you can move up and move down top tip guys okay so minor distraction Let's have a look at our fantastic new measures in our pivot table. So impressive as it is, let's give it some context and let's show off our new skills by selecting our hierarchy. There it is and just clicking and dragging into the rows area. It gives me so much satisfaction when we learn something new and we can reap the rewards You'll notice that we haven't included any of our calculated columns. So let's do that. So from the sales table, calculated columns don't have the F of X symbol beside it to indicate a measure because they're not measures, they're calculated columns. And there's nothing indicative to show us that they are indeed a calculated column because all the others are columns as well. All our other fields are columns. But let's just take margin and drag that down to our values area. So if I select it and we can drag it down, it's still not quite in the right place, so I'm going to move it up. That's better. The point here, guys, is that gross profit is our measure and the calculated column margin has come in as sum of margin, but they're exactly the same. That one has two decimal places in it, but you'll see that it's, it's the same. So it raises the question, when do we use calculated columns and when do we use measures? Well, calculated columns serve their purpose and throughout the, the rest of this course, we're going to come back to this concept. But for this particular exercise, the use of calculated columns in the values area is rather redundant because we've also managed to achieve that through the measures with gross profit. The other big factor in when to use calculated columns as opposed to measures is that calculated columns take up a lot of memory, a lot of processing power because each of the calculations are in a row context and they're computed or calculated at source. Let me just take you back to the data model window and if we scoot across, when we created margin it's calculated in a row context that it subtracts the total product cost from the sales amount in that row for that result. Then it comes down and it does exactly the same calculation in this row and in this one and in this one. I think you get the point. So they're individual calculations. So the processing that that takes 
In our data model, it's not excessive because it's relatively small. But again, it comes in when we've got thousands, hundreds of thousands, even tens of millions of rows of data. Whereas when we created the gross profit, which is effectively the same calculation, it isn't computing in a row context. The calculation is fixed. We're going to be coming back to that concept over and over again. So for the time being, we're going to remove the margin, the calculated column margin. So all that's left for us to do at this stage is just right click and we're going to sort largest to smallest. So well done guys, terrific work. You've nailed your first calculated columns and your first measures. It's just onwards and upwards from here on. So all we need to do now is embed our knowledge with practice exercise number five on page 37 of the user guide. I'll see you next in the solutions. So good luck, take it steady, take it easy, you'll get there and I'll be revealing all in the solutions. So I'll see you then.